Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on cancer. In this video, what we're going to talk about is the transforming growth factor beta pathway. Uh, so, transforming growth factor beta. And basically, um, this is a growth inhibiting uh, pathway. Uh, so, if you've got a cell that is undertaking uh, division, basically, it's undergoing the cell cycle, uh, then uh, the transforming growth factor uh, beta pathway can actually stop it uh, midway in the cell cycle and stop it from continuing to divide. And we're going to have a look in this video how it achieves that. Okay, right. So, this is my plan. We're going to just discuss the signaling pathway at the moment from uh, the transforming growth factor beta molecule coming to the cell, binding to its receptor, and then uh, the downstream signaling cascade. Then we'll see what the overall effect of TGF beta is, and then we'll have a look at those um, molecules, namely P15 and P21, which are upregulated in response to transforming growth factor beta, and the effect that they're going to have on the cell cycle, basically, if it's mid pro, uh, if it's midway through. Okay, right. So uh, let's say we have a cell here. So here's a cell, and we're going to put. Uh, well, we're going to expose this cell to transforming growth factor beta. And transforming growth factor beta is often abbreviated to TGF beta for transforming growth factor beta. Okay, right. So, uh, let's say this is the transforming growth factor beta molecule here. And basically, let's say that in the uh, cell membrane, there are transforming growth factor beta receptors. Now, transforming growth factor beta receptors consist of a dimer of two types of receptor. A type 1 transforming growth factor beta receptor and a type 2 transforming growth factor beta receptor. So, let's say here is the cell membrane. This is the phospholipid bile there. Here, so we've taken like a little um, snippet out of this cell's membrane here. So, let's say we've taken this little piece here and we've put it here. Okay, right. Um, and I um, just want to draw a nucleus on that cell so that it's not just a circle, it's a cell now. There we go. Right. Uh, so, um, in the membrane of the cell, there will be receptors for transforming growth factor beta. And these receptors are dimers. So, let me draw half here. Okay. And it's got a special domain here, which I'll tell you about in a moment. Um, and here's the other half. So, this is the uh, type 1 transforming growth factor beta receptor. So we've got this dimer which makes up the uh, whole transforming growth factor beta receptor. So here's one piece here in pink. Okay, and this is going to be, we'll, we'll let this represent the type 1 transforming growth factor receptor. So in pink, what we have here is the type 1 transforming growth factor receptor. So type 1 uh, transforming growth factor beta receptor transforming growth factor beta receptor. Okay, uh, growth factor, I should probably just denote it TGF beta, beta receptor. Okay, I will from now on. Okay, right, so there's uh, part of our uh, transforming growth factor beta receptor. So this is the type 1 transforming growth factor beta receptor, and it makes up half the overall transforming growth factor beta receptor. The other half is made up by this separate piece here, which I'll colour in green, and this is the type 2 transforming growth factor beta receptor. Okay, so I'll label that as well. So this is the type 2 transforming growth factor beta receptor. And basically, when transforming growth factor beta comes and binds to this dimer of this type 1 and type 2 transforming growth factor beta receptors, then um, it's going to activate uh, this domain down here of the transforming growth factor beta um, type 2 receptor. Okay, So uh, this domain that I've um, drawn here, this sort of rectangle here, these, in both cases, in both the type 1 and type 2 receptor, uh, this is a serine threonine kinase, which means that it's um, got a catalytic portion which adds phosphate groups onto serine and threonine residues. Okay, so let me quickly just remind you of what the structure of a serine threonine amino acid is. 
So, uh, firstly, let's uh, just draw the basic structure of an amino acid. So here's the alpha carbon with the amino group coming off it up here. And what's that? Something sticky that's holding me on. Okay, uh, so here's the amino group off the alpha carbon. Uh, and uh, then also off the alpha carbon, you have this carboxyl group. So these are the two main groups after which the amino acid is actually named amino acid. Right, and then also off the alpha carbon, you have a hydrogen. And then the final group that comes off this alpha carbon is the R group. And this is what is variable for different amino acids. So for the amino acid serine, the R group is a methylene group with a hydroxyl group off that methylene group. So this is the R group in the case of serine. Okay, in the case of threonine, uh, it's slightly different. So let's draw the amino acid structure again for threonine. So again, you have these um, this amino group coming off the alpha carbon along with the carboxyl group here. Okay, and then also a hydrogen. And then in this case, the R group is you again have a carbon and you again have a hydroxyl group here and a hydrogen, but then you have a methyl group coming off here as well. So threonine is just serine but with an extra methyl group off it. So these two amino acids have a very similar R group. And these hydroxyl groups on either the serine or the threonine amino acid can uh, be phosphorylated, basically. So let me show you the structure of a phosphate group. OK, so we'll draw it in this case of threonine. So if this is the pho uh, this is I'm going to draw now a phosphate group. So a phosphate group consists of a phosphorus atom at the centre and then double bonded to an oxygen single bonding did to another oxygen which has gained a f second electron from some other source and it's now got a negative charge so it's gained an ionic um, bond um, and then uh, you have two hydroxyl groups coming off this phosphorus atom like so okay and uh, when you link the phosphate group onto the serine or the threonine amino acid what you do is you um, basically remove, uh, it's a condensation reaction, so you remove water and a hydrogen like so. So you remove that hydroxyl group of the phosphorus, you remove the hydrogen off the hydroxyl group of the uh, serine or the threonine, and then you bind this oxygen to the phosphorus. The uh, hydrogen with the hydroxyl comes off as water, and the oxygen and the phosphorus gain a link. And that's what we mean by phosphorylated serine or threonine residue. Now, uh, in proteins, these amino acids are used a lot in proteins. So you have uh, these R groups sticking off the side of proteins. So you can add these phosphate groups onto these amino acids when they're in proteins, basically. And it can alter the, um, the um, behavior of that protein when you add a phosphate group onto its uh, serine and threonine residues. Okay, so these, um, these domains here of the type 1 and type 2 transforming growth factor beta receptors, they are both active serine threonine kinases, which mean they're actively putting phosphate groups onto the hydroxyl groups of serine and threonine amino acids. Okay, now when transforming growth factor beta binds, what it does is it activates this serine threonine kinase of the type 2 2 transforming growth factor beta receptor. Then what happens is this type 2 transforming growth factor beta uh, receptors serine threonine kinase adds a phosphate group onto uh, the serine threonine kinase domain of uh, the type 1 transforming growth factor beta receptor. So what it's going to do is it's going to put on here a phosphate group. So I'll stick on a phosphate group here. So this and this domain is firstly going to is the first one to become active. The uh, serine threonine kinase domain of the type two transforming growth factor receptor becomes active first. It sticks a phosphate group onto this um, serine threonine kinase of the type one TGF beta receptor. Uh, well, TGF beta serine threonine kinase. So this is a phosphate group here. I've just drawn it as a ball in this case. So I'm using this ball to represent a phosphate group. And now, having a phosphate group stuck onto the serine threonine kinase of the type 1 TGF beta, uh, TGF -beta serine threonine kinase um, means that um, it becomes active. So this uh, serine threonine kinase of the type 1 TGF beta receptor now becomes active. Okay, And what it's going to do is it's going to recruit um, a protein known as SHMAD. Okay, and I'm going to draw the structure of SHMAD here. 
Okay, so Schmad is, is often drawn in cartoons like this. And this is what's known as an R Schmad for uh, the receptor Schmad. Okay, so it's going to interact with the transforming growth factor beta receptor. And we'll continue this discussion in the next video.